So as we conclude our studies in chapter 14 here, Physical Science 20, we're talking about 14.6, which is spherical aberration. Now, uh, spherical is just refers to, um, you know, a part of a sphere. So when we're talking about a curved mirror, we, we said that, um, you know, a concave mirror or a convex mirror would basically be a section of a sphere, right? That's kind of how curved it is. And an aberration is something that is like, um, not the way it's supposed to go. An aberration, that's kind of an exception, almost. So, there is something that we need to talk about called spherical aberration. The first point is uh, important, although it's maybe a little difficult to understand, but I want you to copy the entire sentence down. It says, the rules that we have covered for diverging and converging mirrors do not work if the mirror is too large compared to the radius of the mirror. Now, I'm going to explain that in a second here. So once you get that sentence copied down, you might want to draw the accompanying diagram a little bit here. And, and um, I would say that this is an example where you would have spherical aberration. And you can kind of see, you see how this mirror is curved almost all the way around? This is almost like a half of a sphere, it looks like. And so really, in order for the light rays to behave you know, properly and in a way that's expected, because this radius of curvature here is pretty small, the mirror really should only be maybe about that big. Okay, just this section. So what this sentence means is that when the mirror is too long, that means if you have a mirror that is too big and it wraps way around like this, then you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to see a sharp image on all parts of the mirror. And uh, we'll explain why that uh, is in a, in a second. So in this image... Okay, if you look at each light ray that comes, now we know about curved mirrors, that each light ray has its own normal, right? And so it, it ref, it's reflected at kind of its individual normal. Well, if you look at this part of the mirror right here, you see the problem? This is a very large angle of incidence here. And so it also has a very large angle of reflection. And that angle actually goes over here. And it actually would bounce off the mirror again over here, and it would get really crazy, okay? And we know that these curved mirrors, ideally, the rays reflect off and come through the focus, right? That's what they're supposed to do. But out in this area, where the mirror is too large, you have light rays coming in that don't go through the focus. So... As you go further away from the principal axis, okay, and here, here is an example, this, this upper right here, this top diagram, this is an example of light rays that are further, here's the principal axis right here. Light rays that are further away from the principal axis start exhibiting spherical aberration. That is that they do not reflect through the focus like all these other light rays do. And when you get light rays that are not meeting at the same spot, that's when you get a blurry image or a, um, you know, like a kind of a convoluted sort of looking image. And so you would only see a sharp focused image for the light rays that, you know, come into the mirror around the middle. All right. So because this happens a lot in spherical mirrors, we call it spherical aberration. And again, aberration means a deviation from what's expected. Spherical aberration. So in order to solve this problem, if you want to use a, a curved mirror and you want to actually see all of the images that, that are in the mirror, you want to see them clearly, then what we need to use is not a, you know, a spherical mirror really, or a cylindrical you know, type mirror that's curved like this, like a real circle, but what you want to use is a parabolic mirror. And um, you know from math classes that a parabola is shaped just a little bit different than a half a circle, right? It's not the same. And so here it is. It's the shape of a parabola. And mathematically, this, this is what makes parabolas real special when it comes to optics or to light rays, is that no matter where a parallel light ray strikes the surface, it will always go through the focus. And so you can kind of see the, um, what causes the aberration 
So this is where the mirror would normally go, right? Kind of like that. What causes the aberration on the outsides is corrected by parabola or by a parabolic shaped mirror. It's also why, you know, when you see, uh, if you see on the sidelines of a football game or, or some kind of sporting event, you have a guy holding, holding a mirror. It's like a, a, a disc, right? Or a disc shaped mirror. That's not actually half of a circle. It's not like this. What it is, is it's shaped like a parabola. And so it kind of goes like this. All right, and that is because all of the sound that is being gathered in different parts of this parabola is all reflected through the focus where the microphone is. So if we're talking about sound, here's where the microphone is connected somewhere on the dish. And all of these sound waves, boom, come through the microphone, right? Through the microphone. And so that's why, you know, you see people do this with their ears too, cup their ears, right? You're actually, you're making a bit of a parabola with your ears. And if you, if you do that right now, just go ahead and do that right now. And while I'm talking, you will hear, I mean, you will be gathering more of the sound waves that would normally be traveling past your ear, and you can hear a lot more. All right? And especially when you're talking, like, when I'm talking here right now, so when I don't have my hands beside my ears, uh, I'm talking and I can hear myself, but as soon as I touch my hands to behind my ears like this and make this sort of cup shape with my ear, the sound is now also traveling through my, my arms and my hands, and it's vibrating my head quite a bit more, and, and I can even hear myself quite a bit more. So even when you're talking to yourself, if you just kind of put your, put your hands right here behind your ears, if you're talk, when you're talking to yourself, it sounds good. But if you want to hear yourself even more, uh, let's say, I don't know what, when you'd want to do that, but if you're, if you're on a worship team and you're trying to listen to yourself, you can literally just cup your hand behind your ear and that will help you quite a bit. So, I know you'd look just awesome if you did that with your ears, but... Anyways, so, get that though? The parabola shape? Yeah, makes sense? Alright, so, physicists and sound engineers use parabolic mirrors instead of spherical mirrors. That corrects for spherical aberration. Alright, so that's your little mini lesson on spherical aberration. And uh, that's from 14.6 in your textbook.